dear students welcome to this networks class so today in this video we are going to discuss about the transport layer so this is this is the topic we are going to discuss in the unit 4 and before entering into this uh, unit 4 right so what are all the i mean uh, topics or the concept we are going to discuss uh, right uh, i'm going to organize in a hierarchical way so let us discuss uh, what are all the topics right so in this in this particular unit so uh, under transport layer uh, we are going to see uh, three main categories i mean the intro right uh, and then the protocols what are all the things we are going to study in the transport layer and how the congestion control is being implemented in the transport layer and how we are going to maintain the quality of service so and that the introduction part right so we can call it as a process to process delivery so in the process to process delivery we are going to discuss about what is mean by port address and how the segment is being multiplexed or demultiplexed so these are all the things we are going to see in the introduction part right so introduction part process to process delivery port address and uh, the segment how the segment is being multiplexed and demultiplexed and under protocols in the transport layer we are going to see two kinds of protocols connection oriented protocol and connectionless protocol under connection oriented protocol we are going to discuss tcp connectionless protocol we are going to discuss user datagram protocol so user datagram protocol we are going to discuss like so uh, just we are going to see the format of udp alone and we are going to concentrate mostly on this tcp right so what are all the topics we are going to we are going to discuss in tcp is services and features of tcp tcp segment format right the format the format of uh, tcp what are all the fields which is present in the tcp you are going to discuss here and the working principle of tcp or we can call it as a three phases of tcp how the connection has been established how the data has been transferred after connection establishment and the, finally the connection termination right and uh, also we are going to discuss what is mean by sliding window in tcp uh, we also discussed right sliding window in unit 2 right i mean and the data link layer also uh, so here also we are going to discuss what is mean by sliding window in TCP and then finally we are going to discuss about three scenarios how the TCP will work in normal operations and how it will work if any lost in segment and how it will work in fast retransmission mode. And coming to the third main category congestion control we are going to discuss about open loop congestion control and we are going to discuss about closed loop congestion control. Under open loop congestion control, we are going to see some different policies and all. Say for example, retransmission policies, windowing policies, acknowledgement policies, discarding policies and admission policies. And in closed loop congestion control, we are going to discuss about some methods called back pressure, choke packet, implicit signaling, explicit signaling. And finally, we are going to discuss about congestion control in TCP or otherwise we can call it as a general congestion control in tcp so this part is very important right uh, how the congestion control is being carried out uh, uh, by the tcp protocol itself so there are three phases here under this uh, i mean uh, title there is the uh, the first one is a slow start phase congestion avoidance phase and congestion detection phase and finally the quality of service in the quality of service, we are going to discuss about uh, some methodology called scheduling, right? How with the help of scheduling, how we are going to maintain the QoS, traffic shaping, admission control, and finally resource reservation techniques. So under resource reservations, we are going to discuss about uh, um, yeah, integrated service and differentiated service. Maybe uh, we are going to discuss uh, RSVP protocol also, right? So you all clear, right? How the uh, the content or the particular topic has been organized uh, right in this uh, transport layer right so i am here presenting here in a hierarchical way so that it would be a uh, it would be easy for you to understand uh, right how the topics is being organized in this particular uh, transport layer chapter so let us uh, get into the introduction of transport layer right so say for example if you are uh, going to if you are uh, if you are going to open a browser in a particular uh, system right how it is going to communicate the facebook server say for example this is the facebook server right facebook server so how it is going to communicate with this facebook server very simple right it is going to pass through pass the uh, i mean router uh, uh, at your home and then it has it has to pass through the internet right internet is nothing but a number of uh, intermediate nodes are interconnected with each other so it has to pass through these intermediate uh, nodes and it has to pass it has to reach the facebook server so this is how uh, it is going to be work so 
to find the particular Facebook server, what I need here is IP address. Okay, so IP address I need. So it has to pass through the adjacent nodes also. Say for example, my router is my adjacent node. So and immediate uh, towards my router, another uh, maybe an, another ISP ISP node will be there. Uh, ISP router will be there. So say for example, for, from this router to this ISP router, uh, this is called actually adjacent nodes. So to communicate, uh, I mean uh, the nearer device, the adjacent nodes, then what I may need actually, the MAC address I may need. And finally, uh, I want to open the particular process in the Facebook server so that I can access the particular page in my, my system. So for opening this process, right and to retrieve the particular data to my system i have to open a, a process in my uh, system also right so this is called actually um, process to process communication in the transport layer so who is being responsible for this process to process communication is uh, definitely the transport layer so this is how a two system is being communicated right to retrieve the particular data from uh, destination host to towards the source host or maybe the we can call this as a client and the server okay so transport layer this is going to responsible for the process to process delivery so i am going to open here in my system a particular application and there from the server or from the destination host also i am going to open a, a particular process for the corresponding applications you make a note process for the corresponding applications so at the two end the uh, source and also at the destination host i am going to open a process for the corresponding application so that i can retrieve the uh, specific data that is being intended for okay got it so and then we will discuss what is mean by process to process delivery we all know right there are three kinds of uh, we, have, we have already studied about the two kinds of delivery that is actually node to node delivery and host to host delivery you all know right node to node delivery who is responsible data link layer is responsible here actually delivering of frames is happening here between the two neighboring nodes or we can call it as a two adjacent nodes over a link um in host to host delivery who is responsible here network layer is responsible for delivering the data packets right so between this is happening between the two host you please make a note node to node delivery is uh, is happening between the two neighboring nodes host to host delivery delivery is between the two host i mean from um, other end to the some other end and the process to process delivery under this a real communication is taking place between the two processes as i said earlier so for a specific application programs so at any given moment of time at any system number of process can be opened here right and similarly at the other end i mean destination host also there may be a number of process opened here so how the particular process at the source host and at the destination host it has to it has to communicate right for that at the two end a process has to be open and the real communication is happening here right in the process to process delivery so here uh, i am picturized here the three types of deliveries and their domains so you all know right a host is there and another host at the destination host is there here number of process is being opened here here also number of process being opening here right I am going to open, I am going to communicate here with the uh, process P1 to a particular process which is present at the uh, destination side. So for that, I may need of a port address, right? We are going to discuss in the further slides, right? What is mean by port address and all. So a process is opening here, which means that a port is opening here at the um, host. So it has to pass via the internet. So the data has to be passed via the internet. If any system want to communicate with some other system which is present in some other network, it has to pass through the internet. Internet, it consists of number of nodes which is interconnected with each other. So if I am saying that this is the first system and it has to communicate with the first node, then it has to communicate this adjacent node with the help of MAC address, right? And similarly, from this node to this node, it has to communicate via the MAC address. I mean, the adjacent nodes, it has to communicate via the MAC address. 
For that, who is responsible here? Definitely the data link layer is responsible and hence it is called a node to node delivery. You can see here, right? You can visualize here node to node delivery. This is also node to node delivery. And this is also node to node delivery, node to node delivery, node to node delivery, right? So who is responsible for the host to host delivery? I mean, from a system to the other system, right? Here, the IP address is coming into the picture. Because with the help of the IP address only, I can communicate right from one network to the another network. I mean, uh, from one host to the another host, which is present in some other network. And who is, uh, I mean, responsible for this host to host delivery? Definitely the network layer. And in a particular host, as, as I said earlier, number of process will be opened there. And similarly, number of process will be opened there at the destination host also. So a particular process has to be connected with the particular process at the other end so that a complete a real communication can be happened, right? So this is actually called as a process to process delivery and who is responsible here? Transport layer is responsible here. Here the port address will be coming into the picture. So three address with the help of three address, it can enable the complete communication between the uh, two sides of the, uh, I mean, two end of, the devices okay so in depth what does mean by process to process communication so at any moment of time we all know that right several process may be running on the source host and several process may be running on the destination host host also so definitely i mean need of a mechanism to deliver the data right from where to where i have to deliver the data from one of this process running on the source host to the corresponding process running on the destination host. So I want to deliver the data from the source host to the destination host, right? In specific, from a process to the other process, from a particular process at the source host to the particular process at the destination host. The transport layer is actually responsible for the process to process delivery from one process to the another process. To achieve this uh, process to process communications, so what kind of paradigm we have been implementing here is client server paradigm. Right, the process on the local host, we can call it as a client, right? Definitely this client needs a service from a process, usually on the remote host. So a remote host, uh, I mean, the service has to be opened at the remote host and that remote, remote host is called actually the server. Say for example, uh, you have been opening, uh, say for example, here uh, you can see, right? Uh, you have been here sitting in this system and you have been opening facebook www.facebook.com right what kind of service has to be opened at the server side can you tell can you guess definitely the http service okay so this service has to be opened right and at the server side right at the remote host and hence we have been calling it as a server so after opening this service http service uh, a particular op port has been opening here at the uh, server end and also at the client end and this two uh, i mean uh, process is going to communicate uh, with the help of transport layer right so this is called actually uh, process to come process to process communication i mean the real communication is only happening uh, at the transport layer right okay uh, and in the next video, we are going to see what is mean by port address, right? How this port address being implemented uh, to enable this uh, real communication between the two end. Thank you.